All right, guys, today's the big day. The R32 is hitting the dyno. We had a two hour drive out here to Tampa. We're going out to Z Fever. That's the dyno that Martin often uses because you know, we're out in his territory now. We're on his side of Florida. Definitely didn't get much sleep last night and uh, kind of got thrown a curveball this morning. I think Alberto's alarm didn't go off or maybe he was just a little sleepy this morning. So he wound up, well, he's still sleeping and I'm guessing he's not coming because I doubt he'd want to make a two hour drive. So I kind of freaked out a little bit because I was worried that we wouldn't be able to actually tune the car because we use his laptop and his cable to tune it. Martin says that we should be fine. Uh, it is kind of like nerve-wracking for me not having Alberto around in case something goes wrong or something needs to be changed or adjusted, but I think between me and Martin, we should be able to handle it. I'm excited. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. I have to pee. This is the day that makes all the stress, all the hard work worth it, because when you hear that thing rip for the first time on the dyno and you see that graph, oh boy, it's just like, it's a feeling you can't describe. And this place too, because it's been the same place that I've gone through with all my SR stuff, it's just a special feeling being there, pulling the car on, getting it strapped onto the dyno, going pee in the bathroom. Did I mention I have to pee? First thing when we get here, they want to do a compression test because it sounds like one of the cylinders isn't cranking, so fingers crossed. So cylinder two is at 50 PSI. Martin, you think it's valves or something in the head? I think it's head related for sure because we did a, we added a little bit of uh, oil down into it to uh, to see if um, see if it would raise and it's stuck around 50 to 60. So um, at this point, I think we can call it valves. So uh, ironically, something that we didn't touch, but he's gonna still try to see rev maybe revving and giving a little bit of load will clear it up, but probably not. So it happens. All right, Martin's telling me to do this. Trying to maybe clear it up. Turbo sounds cool at least. It's a sad day. So now we go home and pull apart the head to figure out what's wrong. Probably the shortest dyno session I've ever had. The car never even made it to the dyno. I'm just gonna try to, rather than being like super upset and down, which like every part of me wants to be right now, I'm gonna try to just use this as motivation to get back home and just go hard and get this thing apart and just keep trying to be positive. Just keep, keep moving forward, keep moving sideways. Don't move backwards, okay? We're both so eager to figure out what is going on with this engine that, uh, you know, we just got back from the dyno. Alberto's already working on getting the head pulled off. I got a nice little workspace that I just made, cleaned up all this area, that way we have a space to kind of keep everything organized. And I'm starting to tackle this mess. This whole side used to look like this. Hopefully it's something stupid and it's something the machine shop can just fix easily. Alberto. Any thoughts? I don't know, let's see what's going on here. So I got this manifold. <laughs> yeah, it's a real pain to get to those bolts because of the heat wrap. It kind of makes it a little bit thicker there, just enough to make it way more difficult to get the uh, nuts off. I have to like pull it down, get the nut off, then I can put it back on. I just don't want to drop it. Let me see how you're picking it up. I have my fingers in the hole, like as a handle. Yeah. I got three. Piston walls all look very nice too. It doesn't look like there's anything abnormal going on with the bottom end. So, knock on wood, hopefully that this thing is uh, okay and it's just the head. We're on the phone with Kevin Lawrence from Minjuku. Kevin, can you tell them about that crack and how it's not a big deal so they believe us? I mean, like, it's obviously you want to keep an eye on it, but uh, like I've had motors before that have had those little cracks coming out of the head stud and we've run them up to 650 and never had any issues with it. Okay, thank you. I just I just needed your credibility. Because everyone's gonna be like, oh my god, why would you run that? Once you put the head on it, I can't see it anymore. You can't you can't like just check it. Usually like those like they'll it'll show those cracks. They're just like at the top, like where it was machined. I can uh I will call up ECU Master and see if they make a crack sensor. A crack sensor? <laughs> <laughs> uh I, I wouldn't put it past, you know, twenty twenty. Technology. I have an X-ray sensor on the engine bay, so it checks for the engine for cracks live. <laughs> I think you're onto something. Just so you guys know what we were talking about, I guess this is pretty common on RBs. Between the coolant jacket and where the head stud goes in, there's cracks. Kevin says they don't matter. We noticed them there, and then there's little ones starting around number one and two. Doesn't explain why there's low compression. We're gonna actually do a little test where you put some fluid. Uh, in this case, we'll probably be using brake cleaner or WD-40 or PV Blaster or something like that to see if the valves leak. 
Brake cleaner? You choose brake cleaner? Mm -hmm. Alright, so the problem we're having is uh, number two. Right now, the intake cam is not with the valve open. The valve is like, like three o'clock. So we're gonna spray some brake fluid, brake cleaner, and see. Oh, it's leaking. Yeah, look, it's like coming right out of the other side. You see, it's not holding it. It's not seating properly. Got it. All right, so one we know works well. Oh, one is already, I got a pot on one. So it's not leaking. Number two, Alberto sprays a little bit in and it just starts coming right out. Oh my God, that's like leaking really bad. Cool, well that's a good sign. There goes your compression. I mean, probably the cylinders are all fine and their problem is on the head. And we only checked my intake. Maybe exhaust is leaking too. And we're gonna test the cylinder number three. Oh, Alberto, Alberto, stop, it's leaking terribly. But Adam, you didn't spin the end in the bottom <laughs> We're just playing, we're just playing. I think it's very important to note this because a lot of people are very quick to point fingers and usually like to point fingers at my boy Alberto for some reason. Tell him how we did not touch anything on this head. We literally just bolted it right up. Nothing, it comes like fully assembled like this from the machine. Just like, whoop, right on. So if you haters are gonna try to blame this on Alberto, guess what, you're gonna have to try again. Maybe the next SR rebuild you can blame it on him, but not this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. At least we're joke. See, right. we're able to joke about this because it is the head and not the bottom end. Those cracks kind of suck, but Kevin says it's okay and I trust Kevin. It's been a rough day, but now there's some hope. There's some light at the end of the tunnel. So tomorrow I'm going to see if the machine shop can get that uh, valve seated a little bit better. And then hopefully it shouldn't take too long to get the head back on, maybe a day or so. Work out some more kinks and shoot for maybe early next week, getting the car back on the dyno. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm sorry if you're like kind of getting excited and then getting let down, but I'm in the same boat. So I'm just kind of, who is texting me so much? I'm just documenting kind of what's going on and I hope you guys enjoy it and are along for the ride and it's going to be sick when we finally get to rip it. So, all right guys, later.